Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Good morning. Um, this is Pastor Omega here with you. Um, we want to continue with the series, You Are What You Think. This is the part two of You Are What You Think. You remember in the part one, we said that everything starts in the mind. Everything that has to do with our life, our success in life, our achievements, in our school, in our career, business, everything that we are doing starts in the mind. Now, if you're going to succeed, it starts in the mind. If you're going to lose, it is in the mind. So that the mind is so powerful that we have to be able to keep it under control. We have to know what to allow in and what to disallow. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for such an awesome morning. We give you praise and glory. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you influence your word, O oh God, that we will receive and understand, O oh God, and be able to walk with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we want to continue with um, the series, You Are What You Think. We said a lot in the part one, talking about our backgrounds, where we grew up, where the schools we attended, the family that we belong, all these things we said has made us, has has, has given us, has formed us, amen. And then we ended with the scripture that says that we should renew our minds. The Bible says we should renew our minds. What should we renew our minds with? We should renew our minds with the word of God. If you are a kingdom child, there is no way you can do things on your own. You cannot walk with your own understanding. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 6. Said, Trust in Lord, the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. But it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. The Lord's word is that which directs us. So we should, we should always try to renew our minds, to renew our old mindset with the word of God so that we can prosper in the kingdom, so that we can live a better life in the kingdom, so that we be at peace in the kingdom. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 3, it says that I will give peace whose mind will be stayed on me. If your mind is stayed on the word of God, the Bible says that he will grant you peace. Amen. He will grant you peace. Now let us refer back to what we started with in the part one, talking about Adam and Eve. Remember the Bible said in Adam, um, sorry, in Genesis chapter 3. Let's go back there. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, we say that when they were deceived, when they believed, when they when they believed the, the lie of the enemy, it, it, they, they conceived an idea. They conceived that desire to, to eat of the fruit that the Lord himself had commanded them not to eat. And as they conceived that idea and then and then did what they conceived, the Bible says that their eyes were opened, you see, their eyes were opened and they saw that they were naked. Before they conceived that desire to eat the fruit, they didn't know they were naked. Amen. But just as they did what they conceived in their mind, they saw that they were naked. Amen. And the Bible said, God came and asked them, where are you? He said, we are hiding because we are naked. And he asked them, who told you that you are naked? What, who, what, what, whose words did you take in to make you believe and to make you feel that you are naked? I didn't make you like that. Amen. I didn't give you that word. The word I give you is for you to come and dominate, for you to come and have authority over everything. And I told you not to eat of that fruit. Amen. You ate it and that is why you have seen yourself as what? As naked. We are faced with that decision every day, as said to us. We are faced either to take the um, to take in the right um, kind of information or take the wrong kind of information. If you take the knowledge of good and evil, which is the world's, men world's mentality, which is how the system of the world is run, hey, then you are going to get the, the, the result of that thought. But if you take in the word of God, which is the tree of life, which is life itself, then I tell you, you are going to prosper in the kingdom. Amen. I want us to also look at something. When we look at we look at um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we see God himself, God himself conceiving, conceiving. He, he, he himself thought of something. Amen. That, and that, no, no wonder he, he expects us always to, to meditate and to think 
of his good things. Amen. In, in the verse 20, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Now, he thought about this. God conceived this in his mind. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they conceived this in the mind. And when they conceived, they moved. If you look at the preceding verses, everything he did, he just did it. And God, and God said, 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 let there be, and God said, let it be that. Amen. But when he got to the time when he was creating man, he said, let us make man in our likeness. They conceived. Amen. Before he made man. So he expects us also that before we execute anything, we must think about it, conceive it, and know that what we have conceived will be good. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 8. Yeah, let's look at Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. What does it say? It says that, Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think, think on these things. The Bible expects us to always think right, think on things that are pure, think on things that are good, think on things that are honest. You, 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 you have to let your mind be stayed on these things. Amen. Because that's the only way you can, you can bear good fruit. Because, you see, when you impute those good things, the output is always good. Amen. So you must think on good things to reproduce good things. What you take in will, will, will determine what comes out. So if you take in, take in bad stuff, bad stuff comes out. Amen. If you think of good things, good things come out. Amen. Now let us continue. And we see, he said the mind is the most powerful component in our body that has to be utilized to produce good things. That's what I just read to you. We must utilize this mind. We must, we must keep this mind in check to make the mind produce good things. The only way you can do that, I said to us, is to, for our mind to be stayed on good things and our mind will stay on the word of God. Not the words of the world, but the word of God. If you see yourself succeeding, trust me, you will succeed. And vice versa. If you see yourself succeeding, you will succeed. If you see yourself failing, you will fail. It is automatic. So rather than to, for, for you to think to fail, why not think to succeed? Succeed. Think to succeed. Don't think to fail. Why would you waste all your energies on thinking on evil things? Amen. And then you fail. You see, let me tell you one thing. Um, where I come from, because this, I know there's an international audience. I come from Africa, right? And in Africa, there's one problem I always see. The problem we, I see is, is the problem of, you know, having a devil or devilish mentality. You know, being very superstitious when it comes to all this devil stuff, you see. And people people have, you know, um, 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 making, cashing in on this mentality. A lot of these quack prophets, they go and they cash in on that because they know that people are thinking in that direction. So what do they do? They just try to, 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 to minister in that area so that to put fear in them. And then to take from them. You see, the reason is because the people, their mind is always on the devil. And then you travel out of Africa and you travel to the West. And you ask yourself, how come these people in the Western world are prospering? And you look at their lifestyle. It's not like, it's not like they don't know the enemy exists. They know, but they don't give thought to the enemy. They don't give thought to the enemy. They, they know that if they should think right, good things will happen to them. So they focus their energies on doing right and then it happens. 
In Africa, most people focus their energies on the devil. So every day, everything about them, they see devil here, yeah, devil there, devil. I'm not saying the devil does not exist. The devil exists. But you don't have to focus all your energies on the devil, my brother, my sister, because the power is with you. God has given you power. Amen. He said, Behold, Luke 10, 19, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you believe that? He said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You must conceive that you are a child of God. You must conceive that you, you, you have the authority. That is the authority he gave you in the beginning. You must believe that once now you are born again, you have been restored back to your old state. So therefore, you have the authority back with you. Exercise that authority. But it starts with the mind. When we look at um, um, 3 John, 3 John, 3 John verse, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, that, it says something that God's intention for us. Amen. It tells us about God's intention. 3 John 1. Verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. That is God's intention for us. That we prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. So the Bible say, says to us that though you are weak, don't keep it in your mind that you are weak. Say you are strong. Don't say you are weak. Say you are strong. Look, I know maybe you you are you are you are you are faced with some um, health issues. Um, you are faced with some serious stuff, you know, um, concerning your business or concerning your career or anything, any any kind of bad situation around you. Look, it is not time for you to 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 cry pity. It is time for you to start thinking that something good is going to come out of this. And believe that that something is going to happen in the name of Jesus. Is that not what David said? That's what David said in Psalm 27. Is it one thing have I desired? Let me read it to you. Psalm 27. That's what he said. Psalm 27. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 27. And see what David said. In fact, he's the one we're going we to study today. But let's look at this scripture briefly and then that we can continue. He said, um, um, from verse, verse 4, verse 4, it says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and in, to inquire in his temple. Then he goes on to say, in the verse, um, Verse, da, 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 da. yeah, verse 13, he said, I had fainted. This is David speaking. He said, I have fainted. I have fainted. I have made up my mind that I, he said, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, I have fainted. I, have, I, am, I am so much ready in my mind that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David didn't say that I will die one day and go to heaven when I go to heaven before I see good things. He said to himself that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Are you saying the same thing to yourself? I need you to speak such things to yourself. I need you to speak good, great things to yourself. I need you to conceive here good things in your mind. God has warned us to cast out every evil thoughts, bad thoughts, negative negative thoughts. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 10 verse 3. Let's go there. Let's go there quickly. 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians chapter 10. Let's see what the Bible is saying, what the word of God is saying there. From verse 3, it said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Where are strongholds? Strongholds are right here in your mind. It's a casting down imaginations, yeah? And every 
high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Yeah, let's look at the verse um, five where, um, again. It's a casting down. It is you. You must cast down every imagination, every negative thought. You must cast out of your mind everything that will not make you prosper in God. You must cast out anything that is telling you that you cannot do it. Cast it out. Cast it out. Because you can't. Yes, you can't. Yes, you can't. Cast that evil imagination out of your mind. Cast that negative thought out of your mind. That thing that is that voice that is telling you that you, yeah, your sickness is taking you to your grave is, is, is a voice of deception. It's a voice of deception. Believe that by his stripes you were, you were made whole. Not that you are not, you were. He gave you his healing when he went on the cross. That is what you must conceive. Keep your mind on those things. Keep your mind on the good things that Christ came to bring to us. Keep your mind on those things. Yeah? Now, look at that. We want to study one such character. I mentioned to us David. And let's see how David, how, how, how was, how, I mean, the whole of Psalm will tell you the mind of David. The whole of Psalm will tell you the mind of David. When you look at Psalm 91, hmm? let's look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Yeah? Psalm 91. What does it say? From verse 1. It says that, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say, and I will say of the Lord. This is something that is in his mind. That is, he's speaking. He said, and I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me. From the snare of the fowler and from the what noisome pestilence, he has conceived these things in his mind and he's speaking them. He says that what he shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. This is what he has made, he has fed his mind, and he's telling us that thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day. Do you know fear is conceived in the mind? Fear is conceived in the mind. Because of the things you heard, because of what you have seen before, because of uh, uh, um, what, what, you, what, you, what you are going through, because of something, some, some, maybe somebody has suffered that sickness before and something happened, the person died. So you are also thinking that since you are suffering the same sickness, you are going to die. I told you, circumstances are not the same. They are different. Yes, that person died, but you will not die, but leave to declare the works of the Lord. Conceive it. Have it in your mind. Keep it in your mind. Let's look at another psalm. Let's go back to Psalm 27. Let's see what he said in Psalm 27. Psalm 27, what did David say? Now look at that. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. He's saying to himself, he's conceived it in his mind, and he's telling us that, whom shall I fear if the Lord is my light and my salvation? Let's go to Psalm 56. Let's look at Psalm 56. What does it say? We are reading from the verse 9 to 11. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Yeah? From verse 9, he said, When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know. Yeah? This I know. For God is for me. <laughs> for God is for me. He said, This I know. For God is for me. David had it in his mind that, you know what? I know, I know in me, I, have, I, am, I am so much uh, uh, um, firmly, you know, uh, um, rooted in God that he is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? He conceived it. Verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. 
He said, I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. I will forever praise him. I will forever worship him because I know for sure that there is nothing any man can do unto me. So why do you go about being scared, you know, believing what people are saying, that your auntie at home or your uncle somewhere or blah, 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 blah. No. Bible even told us that if, if we even drink poison, we will not die. If somebody gave us poison, we didn't know it was poison, and we drink it, the Bible says it, we will not die. Conceive it. Let it be in your mind. Have that whole thing in your mind that if God is for me, then I will succeed. If God is for me, then I will make it. Hallelujah. If God is for me, then that sickness will leave. You have to conceive it and meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Your mind should be on it. Look at Psalm 1. Look at Psalm 1. Psalm chapter 1. See what David said there. You know, you know the kind of person that he is. When God said, I have found a man after my heart. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't just for saying that because God knew that this guy's mind is always stayed on him. And what the Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 3 is I give peace to him whose mind. He stayed on me. Now look at Psalm 1. We are looking at verse 2. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. His mind is on the word. He is always meditating on the word of God day and night. Rather than sit down and watch pornography, he takes the word and he meditates on the word day and night. Rather than sit down and listen to gossips and listen to people's um, uh, philosophies, he said his mind is on the word of God day and night. Now we know David. We, we, we may have we, we have read, we've heard. You've heard sermons about David, you know what I mean? But maybe you've not taken the time to really study who David is. Now, you look at David and you just look at a, 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 a guy who is so much um, strong up here that nothing, he's not afraid of anything. He is not afraid of anything. You know, if he, I mean, some, some um, um, scholars and, and theologians uh, give us, you know, like David was like um, a guy, his stature was about five feet tall. That's how, that's how tall he was, five feet, you know what I mean? And he goes to face this Goliath. But it didn't just start there. It started way back when he, he was in the bush, tending um, his father's sheep. Amen. The Bible said that when the lion came, he fought them. When the bear came, he fought them. How can a young boy, a young boy, a young boy be in the bush? I tell you right now, if a lion should appear right now, oh God, goodness me, you will fly out of the window. Amen. But this young boy is in the bush and he's able to tell the king of Israel, you know what? Don't be afraid because when the lion came, I fought him. When the bear came, I fought him. Wow. See what he had in his mind made him so confident. He made him so confident. His own brother said David was proud. He said, you are too proud. You see, the guy was so confident because of what he has conceived in his mind. So the Bible tells us at a time when the Israelites were faced with um, the Philistines uh, in a battle. The bat I call it the battle of Elah because it was in the valley of Elah. You know what I mean? And then the Philistines, there's this guy called Goliath. Goliath will come every day for 40 days. The Bible said Goliath will come and scare the Israelites. So you come in like, ah, and everybody's oh, running away and stuff like that. Amen. But God being good, he sent the father, Jesse, sent uh, David to go and give some food to his brother, brothers at the battle, battle ground. He went. And just as he went, just by mere co uh, coincidence, this guy come against scaring people. It's like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? He wanted to know. He wanted to find out who this guy is. And they were telling him, ah, oh, this is the guy who is, you know, making the whole of Israel shake. This guy is making everybody shake because the guy is so tall. He's about, oh, it's about nine, ten feet tall. And he's so, you know, giants, huge. So because of that, everybody, you know, when it comes to like, everybody's shaking. And like, David, with what always has been in his mind, is like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is he? Who come and fight the armies of God? What are you guys, what are you, what are you guys? 
is doing. Don't you know that God is with you? I mean, paraphrasing. Don't you know that you have God and this guy just comes and scares you and everybody is shaking? Wow. Anyway, tell me, what will be done for the one who is able to take this guy down? Read. You find it in 1 Samuel 17. In the whole of the scripture, you go and read it. He said, what will be done? What would they give the one who is able to take this guy down? You see, verse 25 of um, 1 Samuel 17. It says, and David spake. No, verse 26. It said, and David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen? And the answer, they gave him the, because they asked the same question in the verse 25. So in verse 25, they say that, And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up surely to defy Israel? He is, come, is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Hey! He asked and they told him that a man who will take this guy down, one, the king, will, 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 will free the, his entire family from, from working. Amen. It means that they will supply them they will, they will feed them. They will house them. They will, I mean, everything they needed, they shall be given. They shall be freed from working. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the king as well will give his daughter to him. Wow. So the guy's mind was like blown up. Like, really? Is that what is going to happen? He, he, did, he wasn't too sure. He wanted to hear it again. So he went on and asked again. And they told him the same thing. He asked the same question three times. I guess that when he was asking, he was preparing his mind. He was getting his mind ready. He was getting his mind ready because he didn't want to listen to the negativity of the camp. He didn't want to listen to the bad things that were happening. He didn't want to listen that the guy will come and he's going to cut our heads off. And no, 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 no. He wanted to rehearse the good things that he had heard. So he kept on asking and asking and asking. And they kept on telling him and telling him. And as he kept on asking and they were telling him and he was conceiving, energy was being built up in him. Energy was being built up. Of course, because he wanted to free his family, his entire family from suffering. He wanted to free, free his entire family from working, you know, so hard to, to, to earn a living. He wanted to free his entire family. Maybe they were living in tents. They wanted a beautiful house to live in. So what he has to do, he has to conceive it. So now David come. He's ready. His mind is ready. He comes and he's facing Goliath. And Goliath is like, who is this dog that you people come send to me to come and fight me? <laughs> oh God, God, God. He said, who is this dog that comes that to fight me? You know what David said? He says, then David, then said David to the Philistine, verse 45, thou comest to me with a sword. <laughs> thou, you come to me with a sword, eh? and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and unto the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. This, 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 this statement he made didn't just happen to him there. Oh, he has been thinking about this over and over and over. He has been conceiving this over and over. He has been practicing it over and over and he is able to come. That is what brought the energy 
The Bible says he took five stones. But the first stone, bah, Goliath went down. Your Goliath is going down. Every storm that you are faced with, conceive that if God is for you, then that storm will cease. Hey, that sickness that is, is troubling you on that sick bed, tell that sickness that, you know what? By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Conceive that. Don't let the pain you're going through make you give a wrong confession. Don't let what you're facing make you conceive something wrongly. Speak the word of God. Speak it. And that will come to pass. Meditate on the word of God. God bless you, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. God bless you. And God bled, bless his word today. Hey, if you've been listening and you haven't given your life to Christ, like I always say, you haven't started yet. You need to give your life wholly to him and ask him to live in your life so that he will restore you to your old estate, the estate where you have the authority, the power to speak to demons and they will leave. The, the authority to cast every imagination out of your mind and it will go. If you are ready to receive him, which I plead with you, just lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. I believe that you are God and that you came to die for my sins. I accept you into my heart. Come, live in it. And direct me. Show me the way to go. I take you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for your saving power. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that, my brother, you are born again. You have just started. What you need now is this word. Now, this word, you need to study and you need to pray. But you cannot get all the understanding outright like that. You need to find a Bible-believing church who will teach you the truth in the Word. You need to look for a Bible-believing church to attend. Then you'll be able to grow and become like David was. God bless you. God bless you. Till we meet again, it's Pastor Omega. Amen.